Hey guys, so welcome back to the Great Ace of 22. Let's carry on where we left off. We managed to survive day one of the trial, and now we're back in our investigative phase, trying to figure out what exactly happened ten years ago with Genshin Asogi, Kazuma's father. Uh, Van Zeeks just filled us in a little bit on their history, on his uh, idol slash brother's killer. I promise they probably didn't overlap. In any case, uh, it seemed Genshin was quite the heroic man, so it's kind of... Inconceivable that he would become London's most prolific serial killer for quite some time, the Professor. So uh, there's definitely something afoot there, but the only way we're going to find out more is if we head around town and ask the relevant people what exactly they think happened the night in question he was supposedly executed. And to start off with, I think we need to go to Mr. Vigil's hospital bed. It's a new location that's been added. The guy uh, obviously had a psychotic break after we crushed his spirit trying to gather some information. So, uh, let's probably go there to apologize, uh, even though <laughs> Susato's saying we should leave him in peace for a little while, he's only just been admitted, so perhaps she's got a point. Let's go somewhere else. We need to go to the Great Waterloo Hotel, we need to speak with Susato's father. See if he can shine a light on some things. The 2nd November, Great Waterloo Hotel, foyer. I thought yesterday and I think it again today. This place is so... princely. It's a wild guess, but I have a feeling you'll think the same tomorrow, too. <laughs> Damn, Rianosuke. The sass already. My tea is a finer fragrance than whatever they're serving in the tea room here, though, wouldn't you say? Ah, look what we have here. This is an unexpected pleasure. I wasn't expecting my daughter to come visit me. Uh, father. Ooh, is this your daddy, Susie? How lovely. Yeah, just uh, don't bring up... Uh, Wilson, please, Mr. Mikotoba? Professor Mikotoba, I should say. What a charming young lady. And you are? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Yes, yes, wide eyes. Ah, oh, really? So you're the author of The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, are you? I swear, <laughs> I give Mikotoba a different voice every time. I can't lock it down. That's me, Iris Wilson, at your service, sir. Susie's been such a wonderful friend to me over the last year, you know? She wouldn't dare lie to me about my dead father. Well, well Miss Wilson, I must say I read your work regularly and with uh, much interest. Iris actually lives with Mr. Sholmes, you know, father. Is that so? Well, perhaps that goes some way to explaining that bright look in your eyes. Yeah, even though Sholmes is not the brightest man. he <laughs> She's melting. You wouldn't be smiling so airily if you knew just how bright she is, believe me. <laughs> now then, young Narahodo, it was a pleasure seeing you in action earlier. As an invitee of the symposium, I was allowed to observe from the gallery, after I twisted some arms. And I must say, it was a truly exemplary performance. Oh! oh well, thank you very much. Thank you, finally, someone complimenting my performance. Everyone's hit over heels in love with Kazuma. It's about time I got some recognition of my own. Although I'm fairly sure you omitted by Kazuma on the end there. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm so paranoid. No, 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 please don't misunderstand. It was you who impressed me. Really? You didn't miss a step against Asogi, and we all know how capable he is. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's showering him with compliments. I figured I could throw you a bone. Really? To have matured into such a fine defense lawyer in less than a year is quite extraordinary. It's, uh, very kind of you to say so. And really nice to hear. <laughs> what I saw in court today confirmed what I'd been hoping for. The favor I mentioned yesterday, Narahoda. I trust you haven't forgotten. Oh, no, you, you did mention something, didn't you? But first, we have something to report, Father. Oh, of course, of course. Shall we take tea while we discuss matters further? I guess he's not going to invite us into his room. We're just going to have to have our meeting out here in the foyer. Hmm. I wonder where Judge Jigoku has got to. Yeah, where's your friend? Uh, let's converse over tea about the Reaper. Father, do you know about the so-called Reaper of the Bailey? I've heard rumors. Some members of the judiciary explained it all to me yesterday. Of course, when I was a visiting student here in London, the Reaper was yet to emerge. 
Right, he didn't appear until after that case, when the visiting students had already returned home. Safely. Lord Van Zeeks, who was in the dock today. That was Barak, the younger brother of Clint Van Zeeks, I believe. That's right, and he's known throughout London as the Reaper, as you've heard. But the truth is, it wasn't him behind all of those mysterious deaths. It was somebody else. It was Lord Strongheart, I'm telling you. I see. So what you're saying is, there's been a professional killer at work here. Yes, uh, quite on the nose there with the professional adjective. Exactly. Someone by the name of Asa Shin, in fact. I beg your pardon? Yes, that woman. D did you say Asa Shin? You mean that Giselle Brett woman? Who was responsible for killing my great friend? Your great friend! Yes! Mr. Mr. Wilcox! That that guy. Oh no! A friend of yours was killed? Uh, uh Professor Mikotoba, I think perhaps we should have discussed this right now. <clears throat> because the friend the professor is talking about is Dr. John H. Wilson. And that's not something we want Iris to find out about. Not like this, anyway. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, we're gonna talk about it anyway, alright? <laughs> it's just come up. Ah, I've, uh, I've just remembered something. Biscuits! Oh, this hotel has the most delicious looking biscuits. That was r rather out of the blue. Uh, she's doing this deliberately. Oh, I get it. I get it now. I think I'll go and see if I can purchase some. I wonder, would you like to come too, Iris? Oh, yes. He just tried to leave me behind. I wouldn't dream of it. Especially now. So that young girl... is called Iris Wilson, is she? Yes, that's right. And she's the author of all those adventure stories starring the great Detective Sholmes. But the name of the credited author isn't Iris, is it? It's Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, I know. It's the name of her father, you see. Her father? Uh, Dr. Janie, John, Dr. John H. Wilson. It's a handful to say, especially when you have to include his middle initial. I was deeply indebted to the man for all the kindness he showed me during my time in London. That's why I was keen to reciprocate and invite him to the Imperial Yume University four years ago. But he was murdered last year by Giselle Brett. Why? Why would the hand of the Reaper stretch all the way to Japan? Iris knows nothing about that case, but it seems very likely that the victim, Dr. Wilson, was her father. Well, I can't say that we ever spoke about his family, so I don't know if he had a daughter or not. But I think I can say with some certainty that he was never the great detective's partner. What? Really? So... It could have been another Dr. Wilson, you think? Well, John and Wilson are both common names, after all. <laughs> I suppose. What a quinky dink though. Usually we have a one Steve limit, if you're a TV Tropes fan. Still, it's probably best not to mention this to the young lady until we can be sure. That's what we thought, yes. We're back! With cinnamon biscuits! Ooh! Oh, they smell delicious, Iris! I promise we weren't talking about anything important. I think cinnamon will go very well with the tea they serve here. Don't you, Susie? Yes, I'm sure you're right, Iris. Okay, well, luckily we wrapped that up just in time. Judge Jigoku. Uh, I haven't seen Judge Jigoku in for a while, have you? Guilty! <laughs> I, I can't believe he slammed the gavel on the air like that and managed to keep it somewhat steady. But that guilty is still ringing in my ears. No, now you mention it, I haven't seen him since this morning either. Uh, I suppose since the symposium's opening was postponed, he'll have gone to explore at the Great Exhibition. That reminds me of something you mentioned yesterday. About Judge Jigoku having once been in the dock himself? Ah, yes, it was all tied up with that accursed trial. 
the closed trial of Kazuma's father. Seishiro was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took to the stand to testify. But he got a little carried away and actually managed to break the witness stand. Oh god. Oh my. <laughs> he also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. Oh dear. Although it's worryingly easy to imagine him doing that. Well, it was all alright in the end. He was acquitted and we returned home to Japan together. And the Reaper didn't strike, thankfully. Thank goodness. Ah uh, yes, talking of Seishiro. I have a copy of the photograph we all took together here yesterday. Please. Oh, well look at that. Oh, what a lovely picture. My Why am I sweating? God. Even in this black and white photographic print, it certainly seems to shout, we've arrived in Britain. A common commemorative photo has been entered into the court record. Oh, why is this here? A photograph taken in the foyer of the Great Waterloo Hotel on the morning of Professor Mikotoba and Judge Jigoku's arrival in London for the symposium. Huh. None of us had any idea what was coming when we took that, did we? No. No, that's so true. Well, I'll uh, happily pocket that. The favor. Right. So, you mentioned a favor that you'd like to ask me. Well, this fateful trial that you're fighting. One way or another, it will be over before long. And when it is, I'd like you to accompany me back to Japan. Y y you want me to do... What? F father What's the meaning of this? Uh-oh, she's gonna Susato take down her own dad! Uh, now, Susato, you should understand. You've seen how our courts work firsthand. Japan's judicial system is in its infancy. Especially when it comes to defense. And uh, yet, a hundred years from now, we're still going to do the exact same thing. So, I guess we never really grew up. <laughs> oh, you mean... The Supreme Court of Ju Judicature is in desperate need of a good defense lawyer. As soon as possible. Really quite urgently, in fact. It's, it's necessary. But uh, I've not even been in London a year yet. Come on. I've read all of Susato's reports. I'm well aware of your extraordinary talents. And having seen you in action and with my own eyes earlier today, there's no question. You, Narahodo, are precisely the man our country needs. Am I, though? Susato could do the job. She's my cousin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ritara. She, she did really well. Uh... Say... You'd be leaving then, Rene. Ah, uh, well, that's what happens when you're too good at your job. But then, what am I supposed to do, Father? Oh, you stay here. <laughs> mm, you came here to serve as Asogi's judicial assistant. Uh, oh, yes. She's supposed to be Kazuma's assistant. Fine. All right, go help him then. Our government is still in the process of deciding how best to deal with his situation. You've always chosen your own path, Susato, and I trust your judgment. In this matter also. Father! Please, the pair of you, don't look so downcast. It's merely a suggestion, you understand. A hope, if I'm honest, but I won't force you, even if it is a favor, and I am your father, Susato, and I'll disown you. All I ask is that you consider it, and come to a decision by the time this trial concludes. Uh, you know, I got my hands full right now, defending my client. You think I got time thinking about my goddamn future? <laughs> yes, all right. You... You won't leave, will you, Reno? Oh, Iris, please! I don't need these puppy dog eyes right now. Uh, uh, please don't guilt trip me, both of you. The thought hadn't even crossed my mind. Up until now, I've just been trying to do what I believe to be Kazuma's will. But it turns out... But he's still alive, so... Where does that leave me? God damn it. He's stolen my thunder, coming back to life. It's a monkey's poor wish, if anything. I wish Kazuma was alive. He comes back and steals all the credit. <laughs> and becomes famous while I'm left to... be... studying under his shadow. Well, if you'll excuse me now. I need to telegram government ministers and the Japanese police with this information about Asashin. Of course, Father. Thank you. I look forward to next month's installment, Miss Wilson. Oh, good. And please, do come to Baker Street sometime, won't you? 
Uh, I'm actually going home as soon as this trial is done. We'd love to entertain you. Uh, you don't need to pull out the gun when you say that. It's kind of interpreted as a threat. I'd be delighted. The best of luck for tomorrow, Narahodo. And give my suggestion your full consideration, won't you? Yes, I will. Going back home? Right. Well. You know, Cousin Summer has always meant a great deal to my father. I'm sure he'd love the chance to meet with him and talk to him about all of this. Yes, no doubt. Well. Asashin. Of course, it's so obvious. How could I have neglected to consider the possibility before now? Where have you been? Were you hanging off the chandelier or something? Were you in that potted plant in the suitcase? Ah, uh, Mr. Mr. Sholmes? Hurley, where have you been? Under the rug? Why, I joined you all for tea, of course. What an extraordinary question. I didn't notice you at all. No matter, no matter. Anyway, to more pressing concerns. Mr. Nerudo. Oh, yes. I must dispatch a telegram to your country at once. It is a matter of much urgency. To Japan, you mean? Tell me, to whom I can I entrust the task? Quickly now, who? Uh, well... My father has just now left to send a telegram to the Imperial Police Bureau of Japan himself. Hmm. I see. Well, he looks reliable enough for a bearded fellow. I don't think what Father Sports could be considered a beard, Mr. Shames. <laughs> no. There's not a moment to lose. Kindly ask your trusty, unshaven father to send see this is sent. I, I... I will, but what is it? No questions at this time, if you please, Mr. Sato. All we can do is pray. Pray tell. That for once, my deduction is awry. Doesn't that imply that your deductions are normally correct, Mr. Shams? Which isn't exactly... Now then! You may be surprised to learn that I am a very busy man. Oh yeah, I am very surprised. I certainly have no time to hide behind settees and eavesdrop on other people's conversations. Uh, so that's what joining us for tea meant. I leave the sending of this in your hands then, my dear fellows. Wow, he's gone in a flash. Ah, wait a minute, Mr. Shobes! He just sort of ran off, didn't he? At quite a pace. And left the unpaid bill for his tea behind, too. <sighs> I must catch up with Father at the telegraph office. At once. And I'll run and call us a cab. Straight away. Wow, everyone's just running in different directions. And there was me thinking everyone would be clamoring to pay Mr. Sholmes' bill. <sighs> Fine. You know what? I'm on the move. I can't even examine anything. Uh, looks like Mr. Vigil's been admitted. Checked in. Let's disturb his ass. Sick of November. St. Sinner's Hospital, Ward 3. This is the ward where Mr. Vigil was brought, apparently. To be frank, I'm a little worried about seeing him again. On the bright side, we found him. Ah, oh, the lawyer. Hello again. Uh, are you feeling better now, Mr. Vigil? Yes, thank you. Somewhat better. I'm so sorry to have caused you to... I mean, it was because of me. If I hadn't exposed your secret and forced you to remember things you'd obviously try to forget... Uh, the prosecutor was here until a few moments ago, too. You just missed him. Oh, Kazuma beat us to it. What an inconsiderate man, not even waiting until you had a chance to catch your breath. He said much the same as you. He was very apologetic. But the truth is, I brought all this upon myself. Please, don't think like that. You were in a tough spot. I mean, shit. You jumped out the window, for goodness sake. Keeping it from Evie, my wife, all these years. I've carried such a sense of guilt. But I can only imagine the weight off your shoulders must have lifted by now and hopefully you're feeling a little bit freer you can breathe a bit easier now hopefully she uh, accepts you still after uh, all that but that's not the worst of it over time 
I obviously came to deceive myself as well. You mean about your dismissal? Looking back now, I'm beginning to think that perhaps Inspector Gregson didn't stumble across me by accident at all. I mean, he compensated me so generously for acting as a stand-in. He was clearly concerned for my well-being and doing what he could do to help. So perhaps Gregson knew exactly what had become of Mr. Vigil all along then. He was an inspector, right? Kind of been that dumb. I'm sure this is just deserts. <laughs> just deserts? For ten years of lies and deception, but... You mean just, just deserts, right? It wasn't me that helped the professor escape ten years ago. It wasn't me! I swear it. I swear it's true. Oh, Mr. Vigil. I wonder. Was it Van Zeke's? I'm sure you'd rather not dredge up even more from your past at this time, but if possible, could you tell us exactly what really happened? Imagine, though. <laughs> he prosecutes the professor, tries to smuggle him out, only for him to get killed. But he, uh, and he's been putting on an act all this time that he hates all Nibonese. I want to. I need to get all this off my chest. I just want someone to tell me what I should have done. Well, I don't know if I can do that, but all the same, please look at my armband. Mr. Vigil, would you mind casting your eyes over this? Uh, my head. It's, uh, it's throbbing. Oh no, it's too soon, Mr. Naruto. It's too much for him. <laughs> Sorry. It's too much for me seeing him swoon like that, holding the invisible witness stand. Maybe I should lay off the evidence for a while. I was going to present his wife next. It's probably the same thing. Yep. His head! Ah! Okay, sorry. You know what? Forget your wife. Or the picture of you. Let's converse. Gregson's request. Inspector Gregson was obviously engaged in a special operation of some sort. He was investigating something that even Scotland Yard couldn't know about. Details of the Reaper's marks, yes. It was when he had to carry out those investigations that I would take his identification and impersonate him. You'd pretend to be the inspector and carry out investigations on his behalf. Oh, no, never. A common street peddler couldn't possibly carry out a proper police investigation. All I would do is go to the specified location and make make a little hoo-ha. A, a what now? Just something to leave an impression. So everyone there would think a detective called Gregson was here. So... That's what you were doing on the day prior to the incident? Yes. He asked me to make an appearance at the park on Lime Street for the red-headed league event. So as usual, I flashed the inspector's identification round and was very vocal about my presence. But then you were taken prisoner by those red-headed fraudsters. Yes. So, you'd always make a point of showing Gregson's identification and generally being loud? That's what the inspector asked me to do, yes. Well, that's one way of becoming a legendary detective, I suppose. Not a good one, though. <laughs> yeah, tell that uh, big boss <laughs> from Metal Gear Solid. And as you know, I suffered this bruising around my neck and the hands. But the following day, they kept their word and released me. Without returning the inspector's identification to you, however. We had arranged to meet in the Fresno Street room at the 5 that day, so I could report back to the inspector. But at the agreed time, that's when I heard the gunshot. Right. Okay. Now we're going to go back even further. The prison escape. It was at midnight on the 17th of June, ten years ago. That was the time scheduled for the execution. But the professor's execution never actually took place, did it? Or rather, the execution itself must have been used to affect the plan of escape. I hardly dare to imagine what a chilling plan it was. Barclay was renowned for being the highest security prison in the country. Everything that went in or out of the place was searched multiple times. But there was one notable exception. Or rather, one notable loophole. Something that was never questioned. I have a feeling I know what that loophole was now. The coffins into which the bodies of the executed convicts were placed, correct? Yes. Once the, cor the coroner had confirmed the death of a condemned convict, 
The body was taken in its coffin for immediate burial in Lowgate Cemetery just behind the prison. The chief warder first had to sign the necessary papers. And after that, no member of staff was permitted to touch the coffin containing the body again. Oh, Iris is pouting there. When executions took place, only the executioner and the coroner were permitted inside the chamber. I would wait in the adjacent room for word that the condemned convict was dead. On that occasion, once I had the confirmation, I went into the mortuary to find a lone coffin as usual. The procedure was that I would sign the paperwork having checked the coffin, then nail it shut. But for some reason that day, the coffin was already nailed shut. No! I didn't think anything of it at the time. I assumed that my deputy must have checked the coffin and nailed it shut before I arrived. So, you mean, the coffin contained... Yes, I can only imagine that Asogi, having escaped his execution somehow, was alive inside the coffin. The coffin was then taken out through the main gates and deposited in Lowgate Cemetery. Presumably there wouldn't have been enough air inside to breathe for long. So in the early hours following the burial, somebody dug up the coffin again to set Genshin free. But in the end, he was, fat he was fatally shot in the graveyard anyway. Yeah, all that. Jeez. What on earth really happened in Lowgate Cemetery that night, I wonder? I'm afraid I really don't know. All I can say with certainty are two things. I saw he couldn't possibly have escaped that way without help from somebody working in the prison. And that somebody... was not me. Okay, you remember that much for sure. You didn't help him. The convict, Asogi. Obviously you knew the man then. The professor, I mean. Genshin Asogi. Yes, I remember him well, in fact. Would you mind, uh, telling us what you know? Okay, well, having been condemned to death as he was, any contact I had with the man was short, obviously. After that trial, which was carried out behind closed doors, attended only by elite members of the judiciary, they called for his execution to be carried out at the earliest possible opportunity. The outcome of the trial was set from the beginning, wasn't it? It was a time of delicate diplomacy, diplomacy when Britain and Japan were in the process of signing an important treaty. And that meant that this potentially disestablishing, dis destabilizing case had to be dealt with swiftly and discreetly. The man had less than a week in total. As I was the chief warder, I oversaw his short stay in the cells until his final hour. I remember being struck deeply by his noble character and incredible resilience. Yeah, all the hallmarks of a serial killer, apparently. What do you mean, exactly? He was a killer of many men, but he was always quiet and polite. He was a gentleman, and a man of intellect. In fact, I couldn't bring myself to believe what he'd done, so I asked him one day. Those five members of the aristocracy whose lives were taken, were you really responsible? I'm guilty of the unforgivable crime of ending another human's life, yes. So just one. One life. The following day, the closed trial took place, and the verdict was no surprise. Guilty. That night when he was brought back to his cell, I saw something. Something... unusual. Something unusual? What? last will and testament of Genshin Asogi. Oh, what did it say? Tell me! I'm surprised you remember. As I said, it was on the night following his trial, after he'd been found guilty. I was doing the rounds of the cells, and when I looked into Asogi's, I noticed that he seemed to have a sheet of paper in his hand. Ah, uh, his last will and testament, then, presumably. As soon as he noticed me, he hurriedly shoved it behind his back. But why did you find that so unusual? How did you know it was his last will and testament? Isn't it normal for a man to pen a will when he knows his death is nigh? Yes, that's true. But there were special conditions to Asogi's incarceration, you see. No pen and paper? What sort of conditions? Well, even though he was held in a cell designed for condemned inmates, he was allowed to keep his personal effects with him. With one exception. Really? 
It was allowed as things? That is unusual, certainly. Of course, he had been convicted of killing five members of the ar aristocracy. But at the same time, he was a guest in our country from the Empire of Japan. The powers that be were determined that his final days shouldn't be needlessly uncomfortable. And what was the exception you mentioned? To the personal effects he was allowed? That's the point. He wasn't permitted to have writing materials. Right. Specifically, no pens or paper. So, he was prevented from leaving any written record of what had happened to him. Yes, that's, that was the long and short of it. I have no idea where he obtained that paper. Clearly, instructions someone gave to him. Like, uh... Like with Van Zeeks and what he was reading earlier. I think it was yesterday. Any writing materials would have been confiscated from him upon his incarceration. As I said, he hid the paper behind his back and then he pleaded with me. What did you just hide behind your back? Please. Please turn a blind eye. This is my lifeline. But you know it's against the rules. You're the only person who's seen. If you just agree to keep quiet. All right then, but what's on that paper? A last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. Hmm. I mean, technically you were an accomplice if you didn't report that. How could a will be a weapon? Paper cuts. So I decided to pretend I'd seen nothing, and I let him keep his will. But then later, it just seemed to vanish without trace. What? What do you mean, it vanished? It would seem that isn't the end of the story of this mysterious will. I suppose not. Okay, update. The will's disappearance. I was the only person who saw Osogi's will, but, but somehow it disappeared. It was after Sogi's execution. Which was actually an elaborate jailbreak. The warders gathered up Sogi's possessions that were in the cell. They were all to be sent back to his family home in Japan, you see. To poor Kazuma-sama. And you're saying that it wasn't anywhere to be found among his personal effects? The will, I mean. That's right. Though I didn't search thorough through them myself. But Governor Caden was livid. He was screaming. It can have disappeared completely. That doesn't quite make sense though, does it? How does he know it exists? I thought you didn't bring it up. In what way? Well, we'd understood that only Mr. Vigil was aware of the will's existence. In which case, how did the prison governor know to look for it? Oh yes, you're right. I really don't know how he knew but it certainly seemed as though he knew of the will's existence from the outset. Hmm. Only he didn't refer to it as a will. What he said was... The Asogi Papers. The Asogi Papers? Whoa. What's this? Sounds conspiratorial. I really can't tell you anything of the subsequent events. I jumped out the window soon after. Because, well, of what happened. Oh, yes, yeah, I was, I was on the money. Your dismissal. And the way you blocked it all from your memory. I'd forgotten all this until today. I don't suppose it's relevant to the case, though. Well, anyway, thank you very much for sharing it with us, Mr. Vigil. We're very grateful. Alright, progress. I'm afraid there's really little more I can tell you. My wife Evie will be here shortly, so I do hope I don't appear rude, but please, leave me the hell alone. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Thank you again. But what will become of you now? Well, impersonating a police officer is a criminal offence, of course. I imagine that once I'm fully recovered, I shall be arrested. Uh, okay. Well, I'm so sorry. I'm also kind of concerned his bed is right next to another window. If I'm being frank. Don't be, please. This was all my own doing. I always knew that this day would come. Still doesn't make it any easier. Well, I wish you well. Goodbye, Mr. Vigil. Ah! 
Before you go, there's just one thing. Oh, yes. What is it? No need for the jump scare, thank you very much. With your soggy papers. Huh? I'd be very grateful if you'd make no mention of the things I told you about them. Presumably for some good reason. I might need to bring it up in trial. It's my understanding that their very existence is a closely guarded secret. If it became known that I'd remembered. Well. It could be rather troublesome, I think. I understand. I wonder. How valuable are these Asogi papers? May it tie into another case, perhaps, we've already experienced. Some sort of will that Genshin Asogi penned just before his death. Which the man himself claimed was his last weapon. And now everyone's clamoring for it. I wonder. Perhaps it had something to do with his plan to escape. If there's anyone who might know more about a document that Kazuma's father left behind, it would be Mr. Vigil's governor. Then we know precisely where we must go. Back to Buckley Prison. Okay. Well, Mr. Vigil, I sincerely hope you're going to be fine. Well, at least he seems to be on the mend. You know, his disguise as Mr. Gossip was really quite masterful, wasn't it? Can't remember anything about it except for the floppy lip. <laughs> and he was pretty grimy and icky. I imagine not even his wife would have recognized him. Perhaps, but did he really have to take it quite so far? I mean, no one recognized him, right? Our next stop, the prisoner governor's office. Barclay Prison Governor's Office. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Back again, are ya? Um, yes. Hello? I've heard all about your investigations. Read the report just now. You found him, eh? Vigil? Oh, yes. Luckily. Well, anywho. The laddie doesn't need work here no more. So your case has not to do with Barclay. I would know like you to get the wrong idea about that. Of course, yes. Uh, Mr. Vigil stopped working here ten years ago now, so... Yes, we've seen his dismissal notice, haven't we? He was given the chop. Aye, Kimmer. You can very well. So, how about we handcuff Biscuit? Oh, they really are like little handcuffs. And as hard as irons, too. So, what's brought you down here that day? Oh, well... There's something else I would like to ask you about, actually. Is that so? We believe there might have been a document that disappeared from Genshin Asogi's cell. I think it's been called the Asogi Papers or something. Huh. Where'd your teacup go? Did I know say? Gregson's death is not to do with things that might have happened at Barclay. Leave the past in the past, laddie. Let's not fool about with irrelevant details. Those expressions changed completely. We're clearly on to something here. Where's Herlock Shums? I feel like we need to do a dance of deduction in here or something. Well, let's press him. Ten-year-old legacy? Let's start with that. That murderer's botched execution. No miserable escape. They were Barclay's darkest hour, right? A shocking embarrassment. Because the convict had a collaborator in the prison staff, you mean? Aye, for shame. The coroner who confirmed the death of the man after his execution, Courtney Scythe. And my chief warder at the time, Vigil, who was in charge of the whole affair. But Mr. Vigil says he didn't know anything about it. The rascal would no say otherwise, eh? More handcuffs. Hey, how could I say no? You can never have too much iron in your diet. It tastes metallic, does it? When Mr. Vigil was handed his dismissal notice as a result of what had happened, he was so despairing he jumped out of your office window, didn't he? I didn't know like to say, but that's just Vigil trying to get out of it. Do you know think he wouldn't eh, jump from the shock of his crimes being exposed, eh? I do. 
You would not say otherwise, though, would you? <laughs> of course, I can I shun all responsibility myself. I should not have let him deceive me. Actually, there's barely anybody that kens what went on at the time now. With Gregson having been murdered, and Dr. Scythe forbidden from having any visitors. No visitors. Someone obviously doesn't want her giving anything away. I do have to wonder what happened to her assistant, you know, that small girl with the mask. I presume it was a girl. Well, we're not going home empty-handed. Give me all those handcuff biscuits. And I would not dream of sending you back and wouldn't help, Kim out. Yeah, take a handcuff or two. Told you. Hey, well it would be rude to say nay. Wouldn't want to become anemic. I suppose if there's anybody who might still care about what happened back then, it'd be that last from the forensic division, Maria Gory. There we go. Speak of the devil. Maria Gory? What an appropriate name. Aye, Scythe's daughter. Should they have no more? Just the one. But the wee barns followed in her mam's footsteps. You did I ever see her without a scalp in her hand? I wonder who the father is. Ah. Uh. There. Mama, what is this? Ah, uh, where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? Dr. Scythe's daughter, Maria Gory. You can do with talking to her. Gory. What a great <laughs> conversation topic. Uh, where are we looking? We're looking for the autopsy report now. Maria Gory. She is the coroner. I wonder how old she is. Do we have uh, her listed as a person? Not yet. Time will tell, though. So, she's Dr. Scythe's daughter, but her surname is Gory? Aye. There's some family history, I'm sure, but I deny can the ins and outs of it. She grew up watching a man working with the bodies of folk who died in strange circumstances, and decided to do the same with her own life. Can I understand it myself? Perhaps she was driven by a deep respect for her mother. Perhaps. Anywho, she was in charge of Gregson's autopsy, I believe. Right, the coroner responsible for this incomplete report. Someone told me once that the wee lassie always loved her mam's stories about cutting up bodies. There's even a rumour that she used to listen to the funeral march as a lullaby. <laughs> well then perhaps her mother might have told her about the autopsy from the case in Yesuke. There's so much investigating to do. I love it. I'm here for it. Aye. I'd say there's a fighting chance at least. After all, that was a life-changing case for all of us. We really need to speak to Mascori herself about this, I think. Well, thank you very much. I'm no happy about any part of this. It took years for Londoners to finally forget the whole professor business. Can you no go up on this, laddie? Stop asking pointless questions. I'm sorry. I don't like dredging up these painful memories for everyone. Can you no just stay away, new? Leave me alone and I come back here, eh? I got one more. I got one more question. The Asogi papers. How'd you come to care about that, laddie? There's no many folk even here in the prison who've heard of those papers. Uh, well, I can't tell. Mr. Vigil told me. I'm afraid our sources must remain confidential, sir. Hmph. <laughs> There's only one person who could have literally told you. So yeah, good luck. <laughs> We've been led to believe the papers are actually a last will and testament, is that right? The professors, or rather, Genshin and Asogis, since they are mutually exclusive people. <clears throat> Aye, that's right. You're well informed, Jimmy. Oh, is that the end of the silent treatment? But then after the convict's execution, it mysteriously vanished from his cell, didn't it? That was no. You're off at the half cock there. I think you did not quite get your facts straight. It was there in the cell, exactly where it should have been. Oh? Not what we heard elsewhere. 
<laughs> Let me just have a wee hook around in here. I'm sure I can find it. Oh, here you are. See? The last will and testament of Genshin Asov. Written with a calligraphy brush. Of course, I can only read a word of those Japanese squiggles. But I mind it says he leaves all his worldly possessions to his son back in his homeland. Yes, that's correct. That's the gist of it. So these are the Asogi papers, just chilling in your office. Ah, of course they are. Papers written by Asogi, nay dare bow it. There's no mystery here, laddie. That's your lot. After all the stromage of that sliced over execution. We sent the man's possessions back to his clan in Japan, and that was the end of it. I think we ought to make a record of this, Mr. Nahode, just in case. The Asogi Papers have been entered into the court record. Yeah, the Asogi Papers. Wink, wink. The last will testament of Genshin Asogi that Mr. Vigil claims disappeared after the convict's execution. Apparently, Mr. Asogi described it as the only weapon I have left. One thing before you go on your way, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh yeah, well, I've got one more thing as well to add on top of that. I, Genshin Asogi, hereby request that upon my death, any and all material possessions and wealth belonging to me in London be delivered to my son, Kazuma Asogi, in the Empire of Japan. It is with deep sadness that I accept my fate in this foreign land, in the knowledge that I will never see my homeland or family again. But I regret nothing about my chosen path. Ooh, okay, well, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's something he wouldn't write, right? Let's keep that in mind. Oh, yes? Those papers are note to do with Gregson's death. I'd prefer it if you did not make no mention of them outside this office. Or rather, I would not just prefer it. Consider it an order from the highest levels of our government. I understand. Jeez, everyone's want me. Everyone wants me to keep secrets. Right. Well, thank you very much. I guess we're not ready to go to uh, the coroner's office just yet, but we can go to the prosecutor's. I'm surprised he hasn't replaced that picture yet. Second <laughs> November, at prosecutor's office. Oh wow. So. This is the office of Prosecutor Asogi now, is it? Recreated the crime scene. Kazuma-sama is doing so well for himself. I know, I got some shitty attic and Shums is sweet. We can barely afford dinner. Even though he's always forced to kneel on the floor Japanese style in that dark corner. He didn't even clear the bats out. It's his habit to seize, to set Caesar style whenever he's working. Well, he's not working now, I guess. Kazuma. I thought it wouldn't be long before you paid me a visit, Rinosuke. I was right about what I said, wasn't I? Sorry? That you have all the makings of a great defense lawyer. Uh, well, I always believed that you'd fulfill your dream of advocating in the British courts. I just never imagined for one second that it would be as a prosecutor. Seeing you stand in a foreign courtroom. So gallantly realizing your dream, Kazuma-sama. I'm truly happy for you. And I'm truly thankful to you, Judicial Assistant Mikotoba. Oh, uh, get a room. God. <laughs> Rinosuke, I always thought it would be fun for you and I to shake up the British legal system a little together. This isn't quite how I envisaged it, but I suppose it's just another twist of fate. I've learnt a lot of things during my time in London. About how Susato-san's father was himself a visiting student here once, along with Judge Jigoku. And about what happened with your father. Then you'll have no difficulty understanding why I had no choice. Why I had to find a way to get to Britain as a visiting student myself. Yep. I want to hear it from you, though, Kazuma. As you wish, Rinosuke Narahoto. Okay, we don't have to get all formal. Tell me, your disappearance. What the hell happened? 
It's getting on for a year now, since what happened on the SS Burial. We were heading across the oceans from Japan to Great Britain. When a bizarre series of... <laughs> a what? <laughs> <laughs> when a bizarre series of coincidences led to those tragic events. Sorry, I have to. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> oh, typos. I thought I'd lost my best friend forever. I must have been unconscious for a long time. When I awoke, I was lying on a bed. It was a narrow little room. It was a posy of flowers by the pillow. It took me a little while to realize that I was in the cabin of a ship. I slipped out of the room and headed up onto the deck. Were you already suffering from amnesia at that point? Yes. I didn't know what had happened or where I was. It was just this voice in my head. You have something you have to do. Something no one else can know about. Go to Great Britain. Your task awaits you there. It was a calling I couldn't ignore. It compelled me relentlessly. Out on deck, I saw that I was on a huge steamship, and we were docked in a large port. It must have been Hong Kong. Yes, it must have been. Presumably just before they were due to carry your body off the ship. I had no idea of the situation, but I did have the feeling that this was in some way my last chance. So I concealed myself among the disembarking passengers, and went ashore. Then I disappeared into the crowded streets of that foreign port city. So I could plan my onward journey to Great Britain. Your journey to Britain? Tell me. Just under a year ago, with all my past memories lost to me, I was left behind in Hong Kong. Everything was foreign to me. The sights, the sounds, the smells. My head reeled. I was truly at a loss. I realise now that I'd escaped as a dead man. With nothing but the clothes on my back. No money, of course. That poor Russian girl, though, who was uh, pretty much convicted for your death. I hope she, I hope she's been acquitted. Oh, uh, how terrifying for you! Luckily, though, I had two feathers in my cap. One being your knowledge of English, I suppose. That's right. And on the back of that, I was able to pick up some work as a deckhand on a cargo ship. Eventually, after calling at countless ports, I finally arrived at Dover. That must have been some three months ago now. Your formidable tenacity of purpose showing itself again. I mean, the man had lost his memory and literally nothing to his name. But he still managed to make his way to London on the opposite side of the world. Of course, I had no idea why I'd moved heaven and earth to get here at that point. So, how did you end up becoming Lord Van Zeeks' apprentice then? That can only be called an extraordinary stroke of luck, really. Because the plot demanded it. You see, I was stopped at the border because I had no papers. They took me straight to Scotland Yard. And by sheer coincidence, Lord Strongheart was there to attend a meeting. That's when the second feather in my cap came into play. Would that have been your knowledge of the law? Yes, exactly. Lord Strongheart was curious about an Easterner with intimate knowledge of British law. He took me back with him to the Supreme Court and assigned me to the prosecutor's office. And then, nine days ago, you finally got your memory back after the trial involving Drever. And you had to wear a mask for some reason. Yes, I did. Your father, Genji. And look how far you've come in a week as well, mind you. Ever since I first met you at Yume, you talked about your dream. Mark my words, Ryanosuke. I'll be chosen as a visiting student and make my way to Great Britain someday. Did you know the entire time about what happened to your father here? Sixteen years ago. Oh. When my father left on that exciting trip to Great Britain, I was just a boy. We took a photograph together the day before his departure. It's my last memory of him. But what I remember most about my father is his unswerving sense of justice. Six years after he left, a gentleman called at our family home. He told me that Genshin, my father, had been taken ill in England and passed away. It was Professor Mikotoba. 
Your father, Susato-san. Oh my. Ever since then, the professor was very good to me. He even helped to fund my university education at Yume. I'll be forever in his debt. But nevertheless, I just couldn't bring myself to believe what he'd told me. Oh. Then one day, a letter arrived at our house from Britain. There was no indication of the sender, so I opened it, assuming it was from an old acquaintance of my father. The Asogi Papers. What I read in that letter changed my entire life. What did it say? It said that my father had been a mass murderer, and the writer cursed the Asogi name. Oh no. Oh. As a result of that letter, I found out what had been hidden from me all those years. Interesting. Maybe uh, Kazuma, his son, was his greatest weapon, after all. <laughs> a revenge is a dish best served cold, after all, ten years later. Lyra from Britain. Presumably the letter was sent from a relative of one of the victims. If whoever it was had been a member of the judiciary, he could have been present at the closed trial. The letter revealed that my father had been sentenced to death, executed for being a killer. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to find out that way. I imagine the British government did its very best to silence whoever sent that letter. But someone who knew the truth and couldn't bear the resentment was always going to be a problem. But still, it, it could have been written by anyone. Why would you believe such a thing? There was a newspaper cutting included with the letter. It was the first I'd ever heard of the professor and his terrible killing spree. Well, what did my father have to say about the letter? couldn't bring myself to show it to him. What? Why not? Because he deliberately concealed the truth from me by telling me my father was taken by a fatal illness. That couldn't have been easy for him, and he'd done it out of consideration for my feelings. So instead, I showed the letter to Judge Jugoku. Ah, to the other visiting student. He faltered for the briefest of moments, but then he just laughed the letter off, as he seems to do. But in that moment, I saw it on his face. He was undeniably shocked, shaken momentarily, before recovering his poise. A year later, my bereaved mother succumbed to the strain of grief, and she too passed away. That's when I made up my mind that one day, without fail, I would cross the seas to Britain and seek the truth for myself. The truth about my father, Genshin Asoki. And I wouldn't let anyone stand in my way. Oh, Kasim Sama. I see. And now the Reaper's trial. What we learned today in court turned things completely on their head. It was an impressive piece of lawyering, Ryanosuke Narahoto. Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, you know. I almost don't want to believe it myself. But it turns out that Inspector Gregson himself, the victim, was... It's clear that the Inspector was behind the Reaper's activity all along. Is it? What? You mean you knew? The real question is, who's been giving orders to the Inspector? Really? Yes, Barok Van Zeeks is the real Reaper. And I know that ten years ago, it was him who decided my father must be a mass murderer and sent him to his grave. No, it was merely seeing that justice was done as the law dictates. He's not to blame. Ultimately, it's people who condemn people. The law is just a tool that they use to do it. And when a man condemns another, he must take responsibility for his actions. Of course he must. But I know for certain that my father would never have taken another man's life. But uh, that's the thing, he admitted he did. Maybe not five, but one at least. Cosmo. On the contrary, my father's life was taken by the Reaper. Probably was. We just need to identify who the Reaper is and catch him.